Okay, so we're Team Murdoch, we're representing Murdoch University's Engineering Department. Um, my name's Bryce and I've got my team to my left of me. Um, we chose Challenge 2, and what I want to emphasise here is fatal energy. So our solution has a little bit of capital to it, but it's about preventing safety in the most dangerous parts that have fatal energies. Um, we're looking mainly at the words of refinery for context, but it applies not only to all of these, but every industry that uses these isolation procedures. Um, the industry has identified digital transformation as its key points at the moment. So what we're doing is diversifying through innovation. Um, our talk really focuses on this isolation procedure that was induced. I'm not going to go through it, so retrospectively if you want this, let me know. Um, and we looked at the legal recommendations to make sure our innovative solution still actually meets all the requirements of the law. Um, so the locking policy includes a lot of yellow locks. So what we're looking at here can be up to 100, and these confirm that the plant equipment is isolated. And then only once the blue clearance officer lock keeps all those keys isolated, is the system isolated from the maintenance where we can safely operate. Um, SAP is an industry-wide program that everyone uses for database collections, but most people have a very narrow field of focus. So what this means is that there's a lot of functionality that isn't captured, and what we're looking at today is uh, SAP's 3D visualizer and 2D visualizer. So this is the modeling of one of the plants, and it'll show you the valve path that needs to be isolated. Focuses on the bleed valve on the bottom, and looks at the actual valve so you know where you're going. A lot of valves are really close to each other, so it's easy to confuse and bring human error into the system and that's what we're going to remove with our dynamic view. Um, our solution is a smart lock. So this is what we're bringing you today. It's an embedded system into the existing box, and it's not overly robust in terms of physical deterrent because this is a big, clear yellow sign that something's going on here. Um, we're incorporating traditional embedded systems, which is our specialty, so we haven't actually outlined a literal prototype for you because we've spent more time on the business modeling and focusing on functionality. But we're looking at Wi-Fi communication because the plants all have Wi-Fi networks, RFID scanner for locations, and a battery to ensure it stays operational for the duration of the isolation permit. Um, the RFID tags are robust and passive. They do not require power, and they're very good at uh, clear signals so that we know exactly what the plant item encoded code is it's on. Um, we've got a limit switch to know that the lock is physically secured um, and RFID scanner. Um, the outputs are all through Wi-Fi. So if anyone's been skiing or got a boat, you'll know that these transmit for a long time on battery charge. It's not going to die. Um, and we've got a very small, compact, energy efficient processor. Um, charging happens just like normal when the locks go in the box. So you can use wireless powering or a USB plug, but the point is it's not inconvenient. And 15 amp hours could get you three months of functionality. So this is a PNID diagram. They're quite complex, and you need to be very uh, familiar with them to use them. But what we're looking at here is a live, friendly version that shows you everything you need. So once we're going through, you select your item. Today in our demo, it is a pump, which you can clearly see which one it is in our diagram. We're going to go to the next step where we need to see what we're actioning. So you've got on the bottom right two pumps, two angle valves, uh, bleed valves, butterfly valve. Um, and as we go through, this is the pump I'm actuating. So green signal shows that my lock is perceived closed. So perceived closed means the lock is on. But you need to actually bleed the valve and prove functional stopping and de-energizing of the pump, which sometimes can be a lock in itself to hold the bleed valve open. So it's another item on the list. And we can just go through the same simulation, different valve, different bleed, uh, different pump. And then finally, electrical isolation, which is again, another lock, confirmed lock by the system. And then only when the blue lock goes on that cabinet do we have isolation completed. So this is our solution, and this uses industry relevant programs, the SAP, um, as well as focusing on IntelliPermit. Um, and this is a good segue into digitizing the modern system. So we're bringing control in, we're bringing monitoring systems in, and when you want to incorporate something that's automated to potentially automatically isolate the system, you have your network there to monitor and know what's going on. Um, and just as far as the data we were given, something we outlined was that 10% um, of all isolation orders happen within 15 days of each other. So if we use SAP to log the work isolation permits, we can actually collate orders that need to happen on the same line and potentially save up to 60 grand of isolations just by logging this in the SAP program. Um, so in solution, um, this 3D map that we're using SAP for will actually collate this, so you don't need to look at a previous example like IntelliPermit does. 
you'll have a brand new one based off the particular item you want to maintain. Thank you. If I spoke a bit quickly, I was been watching my time and I got it dead on zero, so I'm happy. So, Adam, I guess as SAP, I probably have to ask this question. But um, <laughs> so, do you see a need for both systems going forward, or do you think you can standardize on one system? And, and what does that give you if you can standardize on one system? Well, either system stands on its uh, own merit, but the combination of the two is where the power sort of travels. Um, and especially because the industry is looking so much at the digital transformation and we don't want to simply bring in a hardware solution because hardware needs a bigger software solution to work great. So SAP has these beautiful existing programs that are crying out for a live feedback in the area um, and this embedded lock really works with S SAP modules and not just the 3D visualizer. I'm sure there's a whole other network because SAP is so comprehensive it's hard to get a feel for it. <laughs> <laughs> Great way to sign up to at least one of the judges here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, <laughs> um, just a really com commendation, really like the fact that you've not just addressed the issue of getting the wrong lock, but making sure it is kind of locked with that kind of limit switch mechanical system in there. So. No, just commendation on that. Thank you. And yeah, we've made a note not to explicitly list parts because some scenarios are very weird and what we would actually want as an end goal is a dedicated lock for each item that actually automatically closes. So as the pumps um, become manual uh, automatic pumps, we talk about a practical automation that's real and industry proven. So our lock will close and prove it's isolated rather than some fancy sci-fi solution that does not work. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what, um, I mean, the uh, identification of a lock in a position uh, over a period of time is fantastic. Uh, did you do any work, I guess, in the, how do we know they're in the right locations? I mean, we've got them from a PNID, we've got them from a, um, how do we, and a visualisation of them, how do we know that they're, they're, they're in the right spot? So, it would require preliminary modelling, so our 3D model from the 3D visualiser in SAP, is your first step where you design your plan digitally, um, and then from there you take each code number from the PNID, you give it its own unique uh, passive RFID tag, and that passive ID tag will sit exactly where the lock physically lands. So they have a bit of leeway, it, it can be close, it can't be too far, but the point is that you can have three locks very close to each other, and like GPS or something else, it will know literally which lock is on which. Uh, piece of equipment, such that when you put the lock on the wrong piece of equipment, you get a lot of alarm bells and go, something's not right here. And even if you go to put your blue clearance lock on all the keys, it's still going to say, no, we will not send this through to maintenance. Oh, nice, thanks. Any idea how much your locks would cost compared to industry standard? Yeah, uh, so rough ballpark figure, or, well, sorry, a very round figure of maximum $100. So down here, this is an ESP8266. They're worth $10 dues for me. I'm sure if you bought a thousand of you get more like a dollar. Um, these RFID tags are again about $5 for me on eBay at one a piece. Passive RFID, passive RFID tags, same deal. Um, and really, in terms of lithium batteries, that's the most expensive part. And you're talking $10 a battery every three years, maybe? So, you know, ideally, as we're talking about our embedded automated locks in 10 years, projected, that's not going to need any expensive parts or any replaced parts. One thing that I really like is you not only address the safety issue, but you're also looking at um, productivity side of it and the optimization of, I guess, batching isolations using SAP. So yeah, that's fantastic. Um, just a, do you have a rough estimate on how much a single isolation how much of a time saving you would get from that, and also how much time saving would you get by the, the further optimization or batching? Yeah, so uh, from the data we were given, uh, we found that when we looked at a 15 day window, 25% of all of the isolations um, were actually within that 15 day window of the same isolation path. So when we did a rough number of two people per shift, 12 hours per shift, 
times 300 isolations per week at an average cost of $85 per labourer. The net sum was approximately 60k a year just from a sorting algorithm. So this is something that SAP offers, um, and it does require to put your work permits in first, but part of the idea of bringing us into the digital age is that the world changes so rapidly you cannot ever have a fixed solution, and the second a new work order comes in, everything reshuffles, and that's the way that this dynamic future needs to be.